Where, where are you on, I think there's folks who would look at Ted Cruz, I know you all have endorsed Ted Cruz as we talked about earlier, um, and especially the effort to, um, I don't know if negotiate is the right word, but to use the leverage that is available in Congress, including government shutdowns, um, to force policy changes. There are some Republicans who say that's burning the House down, and that A, politically, that turns off maybe independent voters, and B, rationally, it hurts the United States to have sort of a government shutdown, showdown. Is that the kind of tactic you think is necessary? And if so, just explain why. I don't think that you can actually shut the government down, but from the perspective of a, a federalist states rights person, yeah. um, if the government, the federal government wasn't doing it, the states would. The states would pick up the slack. They already get a lot of their money from the federal government for programs that the federal government dispenses or, or regulates. Uh, if the government wasn't taking the money, we'd be using it here for pretty much the same purposes, perhaps more efficiently and more effectively. So there's really never going to be a government shutdown. So I, I just don't buy although, into that whole argument. Although there was. But state governments, again, you have 50 state governments mm -hmm. who are all collecting taxes, regulating highways. If they didn't send the road taxes to the federal government, would they spend them on bicycle paths or would they spend them on roads and bridges or, you know, so mm -hmm. the money's always going to be there. And so there's yeah. never, ever really a government shutdown. It's just federal workers who are idled, I think. Is That's what I'm saying. So you feel like there's a temporary federal shutdown Really, you question what, what is that? the executive branch going to stop negotiating with foreign powers? Uh, um, I mean, really, you, there's enough money there already mm -hmm. that they could probably manage just fine if, if a few less dollars were directed in their way. Um, let's talk about this race. Do you feel like uh, I know you've endorsed someone, but do you feel like getting to that endorsement was it an easy choice, or how do you see the split? You put wide field still, even. How do you see the, see the split, and how do you see the decision that you faced? Uh, my decision was relatively easy. Um, you know, as a constitutional conservative type yeah. person who believes in local control and and trying to keep the money and the power closer to the people, you know, who who are subjects of that power, mm -hmm. uh, is it, an important point. And so, we always want to support those kinds of candidates. So Rand Paul, obviously good constitutionalist, he's about local control. Ted Cruz, local control. Um, ben Carson has said he's for local control. You know, he's relatively new to the political environment, but as an outsider, he has a fresh perspective. Um, Carly Fiorina, who we've interviewed several times, has, um, uh, has a lot of business and worldly experience, but again, she sort of says, you know, yeah, this is broken, we want to try and fix it. Um, but, you know, knowing Ted Cruz, I've interviewed him a few times as well, he really, it really wasn't a hard choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, those were my two favorites. Um, if, when we had the 603 Alliance Caucus, if, if Rand Paul had won, I would have been like, yeah, let's go, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, as for the other candidates, um, again, it's about votes, it's about legislative history, it's about executive history as governors. Um, what did they support? What did they defend? What, what did they promote? What did they allow? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't see the governors. I like governors. I think governors make great presidents, but the current crop of governors we have has some uh, a collective consensus about the role of the federal government in the states. Um, large programs like Common Core, um, Medicaid expansion, these are things that tie states to the federal government with money and then the regulatory state follows behind. So it's very difficult to support somebody when you have those other choices. And then just a word more about Ted Cruz. What's what? I know it's so obvious to you, but to our viewers who either are still deciding or you know are kind of like Ted Cruz, like why 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 Ted Cruz? Well, I think ideally you want to you want to optimize local control. You want people. You know, we had a revolution over the idea of local control, and the idea behind local control is that the money and the power stays as close to the people as possible, so they have the ability to engage with their government in the easiest possible manner to make sure that the government is not just accountable but but is doing what they want them to do. Uh, to me to be the most constitutional candidate which means he is the one most likely to favor local control and to devolve some of that power and some of that money back to the states. Sometimes um, everyone kind of likes to bring up what they think are, are problems with the other parties but I hear people on the left sometimes say you know Republicans are all about local control except when it has to do with gay marriage, for example? I think it's a local control issue. Okay. I think abortion is a local control issue. I think they all are. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's none of the federal government's business. States should make that decision on their own. States should make those decisions, and people should be free to move from towns and cities and states, whether they favor taxes, higher taxes, lower taxes, uh, more welfare, less welfare, more job security, less job, whatever, whatever the issue is, it comes down to being committed to local control. If you live in a town and your town decides they want to do A and you're a B kind of person, then you either engage in your town and you try to convince your citizens and your politicians to, of the value of your position or you consider going to this other town that's more favorable. I mean, it's the free ability to move around, whether it's money or people or property, is really what local control is about. Um, just a couple more questions. Can you uh, move to oh, yeah. right one inch? Sorry. Me? No, no, no. Sorry. Can you move to your Steve? right? Oh, yeah. sorry. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Another inch? Um, <laughs> I just want everyone to look as good as possible. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Oh, good luck with that. <clears throat> I wish you to deal with me, so you're, you're all, all right. right. Um, I lost my train of thought for a second there. Uh, you talked about sort of looking back at the way Republicans have voted, and you said there's a divide here in the party. It's obviously what my story is about. How important is this race right now in terms of the Republican Party and conservatives and the direction forward? People like to talk about how this is the last chance, and I don't know that that's necessarily the case. Uh, it, it's a nice, it sounds nice, it sounds immediate, like we have to do something now, and and I don't want to see us add another ten trillion to the debt. You know, I, I have children, and I don't know if they'll be as politically active as me or is mm -hmm. is you know interested in trying to communicate the problems that could cause. But um, I just derailed my train of thought. No, it's okay. <laughs> you were saying pe people like to talk about this <coughs> the last chance, and that sounds nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, if you look at history, you go back to the original progressive era in the beginning of the century and you hear stories about um, gangs of folks going around and intimidating business owners and and I don't see that now you know maybe on the internet maybe that's the the modern equivalent of that so I don't know if it's the last chance we have but we're close we we had 10 trillion in deficits and in and, and, and the national debt we've got another 10 in just a very short period of time and sooner or later somebody has to pay for that so if you don't want to be 20 30 or 40 trillion dollars in debt. You need to decide if this is the time for you to choose somebody who's more inclined to stop spending at the federal level and to let the states manage those things. Mm -hmm. um, th I, this was the, I, that I lost my train of thought and I wanted to come back to you, sorry. And we're both like, Wah. um So y you've got this great, this really great like mantra that I feel like does get to the spirit <coughs> of what you're at, you know, fire breathing, like rebel. I think at some point you have like, we are the angry mob, you know, yeah. on your website. But we're not, are we? Right, that's what I'm getting at. You have all these words, and, and to be honest, you know, politicians and some of my friends probably in the media like to talk about how angry the right is, you know, and we do, we do polls and people are saying they're angry. We know people are angry. Um, that's a real thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, you don't seem so angry, <laughs> you know, if you tell me where you're at, right? Uh, I'm not angry. I'm um, not saying you should be, but I think oh, that's no, an important no, no. point. Oh, I yeah. know, no, and I, I yeah. get that, that people do say they're angry that, uh, on both sides. Um, you know, you can yeah. look at any event and you will find people protesting whoever's there, whether it's Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton or Ted Cruz or, or Chris Christie or whatever. Yeah. People um, are energized and excited about what's going on. Sometimes they come off as angry and, and frustrated, um, unable to articulate the feelings they have about the relationship with their government. And so sometimes they have to yell to be heard. And you know, we have people, at, even at local boards and committees, who go in and, and they have a problem with their local government. And in order to be heard, they have to stand up and they have to speak, sometimes loudly, sometimes with frustration and anger in their voice to be heard. They're not angry people. I, I mean, I know them. I, I, we've covered a lot of people who've been in those circumstances and even been arrested at these right. meetings. But um, Are you an angry person? No. No, I, I have a I have a strictly physical relationship with my politics. I don't get too, too, not emotionally involved because I mean obviously you have feelings and thoughts and ideas, but uh, it, it's not something that I'm going to run down the street and scream and yell about. I this is what I do. I I couldn't figure out how to translate what I knew about civics into a conversation mm -hmm. that I could have with other people, so I started blogging. And blogging led to radio, and radio led to interviews on TV and things like that. You know, mm -hmm. so everybody needs to find their outlet. And if you if you haven't found it yet, I imagine if you're dis dissatisfied or you're unhappy. You know, even if you're in a restaurant and you're dissatisfied mm -hmm. and you're unhappy, just because you're unhappy with your service doesn't mean you're an angry person. 
Do you consider yourself an extremist? Is that good? Is that bad? Uh, we use the term because other people use the term. Um, hijacking and actually, the language. Can you go back? Can you say a full sentence? Which term? And which term? Yeah. Well, extremist, for example, uh, it's it's what we're called. It's the label we're given. Uh, we're extreme because we believe in smaller government, local control, as opposed to a large proportion of the elected political class that seems to think that there's people in Washington D.C. And, and regulators who would do much better job than than we would uh, at managing our local politics. So that may be extreme, and and compared to that, it is really because they're talking about, you know, we're going to plan things here, we're going to send you a check, and this is how we'd like you to spend it. Well, we'd rather keep the money here and go talk to our legislators and our, and our town councils about how to spend the money. And there's an extreme difference in that philosophy, and that's why extremist is an appropriate word. My last question, we've talked about a lot of words, but I think that this, a lot of thought has been missed just in this general area because people haven't really gotten, because of these words, you know, mm -hmm. people don't really understand or they just kind of pass through. Um, another word that you hear is rhino. <laughs> so, do you, are rhinos the enemy? Not so much the enemy. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. Uh, rhino means Republican in name only. It assumes that somebody who has uh, moderate to left-leaning tendencies has labeled themselves as a Republican for a political advantage. Um, if they're voting in a manner that is divergent from the platform or divergent from the Constitution, depending on what document you want to talk about, then are they really what they say they are? Are they really a Republican if they don't follow the party platform, if they don't believe in local control, if they don't believe in you know, personal freedoms and liberties like the Second Amendment? So that's the difference. You know, it, it's, it, that is a label, and it's a label because there's something that they're being measured by and they're not measuring up. So in a way, maybe they are the opposition at least or something. It, it seems like it is some days. You know, you, you write something about somebody who has voted the wrong way in, in your mind, and they are willing to, to weigh in on you and say, listen, you know, and that's fine. That's part of the conversation. That's part of the battle. Here's my opinion. Here's your opinion. But if you ran on repealing Obamacare, if you ran on cutting the deficit, if you ran on ending excessive spending, but then you go and do the opposite, why am I the bad guy? And I guess, I guess actually, I'm going to cheat my actually very last thing. I think, I think folks who might be labeled rhino, but who are trying to argue that they're trying to follow the platform would say, it's just not practical. You just, you have to make compromises and that the wing of the party you represent is so opposed to compromise that nothing could possibly work and that you know the point out now there's i sort of get where you're coming from because i see it every day in washington mm -hmm. sometimes people just completely cave and they say oh you have to compromise yeah. <laughs> but but there is some time when there's two opposing forces completely opposing forces and something needs to come out of it and perhaps both sides need to compromise but they say people like you are the problem that you guys are so anti-compromise that nothing could get done. Would this all work a lot better if we did it locally instead of nationally? I think it would. Mm -hmm. uh, if I live in a state and a town and 50 people want one thing and 50 yeah. people want another thing, somebody in between has to decide what that thing is. Right. If the other 50 people decide they don't like that, then they need to convince those other 50 people locally. Right. Nationally, you can't do that. The odds of my being able to get on a plane or a car, get in a car, go down to Washington, D.C., try to get a meeting with my congressman, right. who is one of many people, um, the odds of my being able to influence the outcome of that debate are very thin, very right. small, right. very unlikely. Local control. If it's a state matter, I can go to state house. Well, say like Obamacare though, right? Obamacare, mm -hmm. that's obviously not a state issue. I know that you guys wish it were. You know. Well, I don't think that's the job of the federal government to, right. to manage health care. The that idea level. of repealing Obamacare, right? So like say, are you going to you know, I am going to st stop government from running, which I'm glad we talked about, which you think probably really maybe didn't make that big of a deal anyway. But I guess it's this idea that like my way or the highway. I don't think so. I think that we've been moving along for years mm -hmm. saying, okay, here's another chance. Here's another chance. Mm -hmm. Here's another chance. Um, and, and we're getting to a point where we're running out of chances. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's sure. it. Yeah. Okay. And usually that's a little longer than I go, but I could talk to you forever because I think it's really... I think oh, we could have sat here. Really you know, we often have guests in. I know. And, and because of the nature of our program, it's not an interview, it's conversation. Um, 
You turn the light back on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. An interview is a conversation, so it ne you never know where it's going to go. Yeah, yeah, that's the great right thing about but this. But now I know where my phone is. Oh, is it? Oh, were you waiting video. this whole time? Well, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, okay. no it was fascinating right, okay. anyway. Uh, that's not mine. That's uh, mine. That's Skip. Those are mine. Mine's the one sitting right on top of the phone bank. Steve, other than your um, co-bloggers here, I'm not sure I could have found someone better for this. So, oh, really, thank you. It's, it's it's just, I do, it bothers me when I just, everyone's always looking for this, like, you know, irrational, angry guy, you know, and, and it's not like that. I think, like, a really thoughtful, conservative perspective uh, needs a lot more attention. Yeah. Well, well, hopefully, we probably we would get a, a lot more bombastic. Yeah, yeah, likewise. <laughs> oh, shoot! <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you couldn't have uh, figured that out already? <laughs> I figured no, That's a very good interview. Was Congratulations to both of you. Well, thank yeah. you. That was really good, yeah. Oh, good. I'm hey. going to go home yeah. and process it's this right now. It's not my best meeting. I won't post, post it. Don't I won't post, post it. it don't but you got to tell us when. Because I, th I think both of you did an excellent job at the interview. Oh, good. Well, thank you. Really good. So, what you want to do is you post it. Send yeah. us a link to the article. Yes. And that way we can post it and link back to you as well. That's right. That's perfect. So that way, that way you get the scoop, and perfect. you get and you get a link back as well. Perfect. And then we get to talk about it. That's right. That's the cool thing. Yeah. That's yeah. great. It's great with me. That's the conversation. Um, uh, what was I going to say? And this this is planned. This is our this is our prime time big piece for debate night or for primary night. Really. So this will be Tuesday night. Mm. Yeah. Oh, cool, Steve. Yeah, and I'm curious. Do you guys know a Republican named Renee Plummer? Do you know who that is? Yes, she's she's big time out on the Sea Coast, which yes. she's been. She held a whole lot of meetings. Uh, yeah, she's she, a very yeah. She I think she had a lot of the candidates. She has yep. them for lunch. And, or something. and I can't remember who she actually endorsed. She did endorse somebody. She but did. I can't remember. Chris Christie. Okay. She is the other character in this piece. Mm -hmm. Ah, well. Well, that'd be interesting I to think see. So. Yeah. And, and that would be the opposite view. Crop TV.